podcast is it? On this day after the lunar eclipse, did you know it was a lunar eclipse last night? No, I didn't. <laughs> I was at work. It was <laughs> true. Saving lives. Mm -hmm. I'm communing with the indomitable, the sexy, the the way I forgot. The woman with humor so odd, I don't even always know what you're talking about. My favorite homeschooled emo. Oh my gosh. Ella! Yay! You once said that Jesus was trans and a vampire. <laughs> Did I say the vampire part? <laughs> We're gonna be I remember the trans part vividly. Yes. But... Would you care to break that down a little bit for me? Okay. I, don't, I don't know why you said Jesus was a vampire. Oh, actually, I, I do think I remember it now. It was two separate statements. Yes, two separate statements. So the reason why I said Jesus was trans was because he was born of woman and his only human genetic DNA would have come from a woman, therefore he's technically a clone, therefore he would to have two X chromosomes. So right. to be a man, he'd have to be trans if you're looking at it that way biologically. Oh, there was no man involved. There was only divinity and that divinity was a woman not god by the way the he's a vampire because he brought people back from the dead and he also turned water into wine and people are to eat his body and his drink his blood drink the blood and that's either really culty or really vampiric depending on how you look at it. I do remember this statement now. I had just finished listening to the audiobook of Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, <laughs> and it changed my life. It's really good. I fall asleep with them on and forget to put sleep timers on, and so I lose all of my listening hours in like a few days. Yes, I didn't I know that was a thing. On. Like, I, I don't have any more listening hours until like the 18th. Actually, I think it is almost the 18th, but- It is the 18th it is today. The 18th. <laughs> it is the 18th today, September 18th. My listening hours are back. I can finish Dave Grohl's book. <laughs> Yeah, this is right after the scandal of him cheating on his wife and siring another child out of wedlock. Siring is crazy. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Putting this in perspective of the time, the timeline. Putting yes. this in the timeline. So we were both famously mm -hmm. homeschooled. Yes, famously. In semi-rural areas. For me, a pretty rural area. Mm -hmm. You were homeschooled like your entire life, right? Yeah, you were, K through 12. You saw Tim life. Hawkins <gasps> is what I was working up to. I've seen him live. <laughs> yes, You I mentioned have. this once and I never forgot it and I wrote it down. I said, this woman has seen Tim Hawkins. I have. If you know who Tim Hawkins is, you're cooked. Just the, <laughs> just the same way if you know who Joseph Smith is, you're gone. A little sprinkle of Mormonism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my ex I wasn't Mormon, guys. Not me. My ex-boyfriend. That is the crazy lore. Maybe okay. in like several years we'll like extreme deep dive into the Mormonism mm -hmm. X lore. What about Tim Hawkins That's were you wanting crazy. to know? That was literally it. I just okay. felt the need to say you've seen Tim Hawkins. I have seen Tim Hawkins. I don't remember what he performed live. That was my okay. introduction to Nirvana was oh, no, Tim Hawkins damn, parody. Damn, and Dave Ramsey. That's another like bizarre deep No. Cut. Did your mom make you do the envelopes? No, my aunt has <laughs> tried to. My aunt, I have Dave Ramsey envelopes in my drawer because my aunt <laughs> sent me them once I became an adult, and she was like, you need to do this, this is the best way to budget. I'm sure it is, but I just know that he like fires people at his company if he finds out they're gay, so that's not happening. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'll bring the envelopes to burn at your, yes. oh my at gosh. your bonfire, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Dave Ramsey. I'll bring all my Christian propaganda to burn. This is like the perfect segue to get into the little theme of the episode. Miss Satanism, hey, because I would say we loosely dabble. <laughs> I, not exactly. Like, I'm not, I don't ascribe any religion to myself. But would you say that's the same for you? We have talked about I this. don't have a specific religion. I will say I was subscribed to the Satanic Temple newsletter right. for my email for years. I'm pretty sure I've donated money. Um, I do believe in their causes. I, I think remember. having a provocateur approach to mm. um, camp. Yes, to advocacy can be really effective because it gets people's attention and then those who care enough will read into and look at why you're doing things. Of course, that's not mm -hmm. going to be effective with everyone, but half the time if you're trying to draw attention to a cause, people aren't even going to read it because right. they didn't see anything eye-catching and our attention spans are so burnt out. But if they read Satanists promoting abortions, they're going to read that. Right. They're gonna read that because, first of all, that actually does feed into their ideolo ideology. They're gonna be like, of course they do. They're probably drinking their blood. They're drinking aborted fetus blood. 
which that's what Under I the full moon. kind of wanted to the get into. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the wolf moon. So first, I remember one of the first times we hung out at Starbucks, somehow that came up and you said that you were subscribed to their oh. newsletter. And I said, me too, oh my goodness. Because you were the only person that already had a prior knowledge of temple stuff and also mm -hmm. was just kind of into it, you know what I mean? And like an exploratory way. Something I'm consistently reminded of and baffled by is that people still think that Satanism is eating babies and sacrificing whatever it is, which I think was largely fed into <laughs> during certain points in history. So I've watched a documentary that I really swear by called Hail Satan, and it's so fascinating because that's where I first learned that the Satanic Temple of today is a political front and movement that's mm -hmm. more about supporting causes and raising money, and they don't, they actually are of a belief that I am not, which is that they don't believe in anything that's magical or anything that's not scientific. So they, like witchcraft and Satanism are not the same thing, at least by today's modern satanic mm -hmm. temple standards, which I find very interesting. You're right, that word just brings up such a reaction mm -hmm. in people because they think that it's throwing babies in a fire under the full moon and it's very much not. How did you even get into so... that? Were you just curious? I can't remember exactly, but for some reason, like, the YouTuber named Jacqueline Glenn is coming to mind. Oh. And I think she may have talked about Satanism briefly on her channel. I watched her back in, like, 2017, 2018. A lot of her videos um, centered around religion or non-religion and kind of destructuring Christianity. I do believe she grew up Christian. Satanism for the Satanic Temple, it's not a, it's not even a non-theistic religion mm -hmm. it's just an atheist organization right. that uses satanism to help promote their causes that's the aspect mm -hmm. of it that people don't think about right again i want to go into the satanic panic in a future episode or video because i find it so fascinating but that influenced so much of the culture's lack of understanding in that arena and also like our parents generation and their view of anything that is witchy and certainly anything that has to do with satan obviously is just an immediate ah! so but i i find it fascinating and i i really love anything that uses that figure of a fallen angel as like a rejecting authority anarchy mm -hmm free thought and free free will is really what they use the symbol of satan as mm -hmm. and it's yeah it's weird to turn something on its head in that way that was once scary for us probably as children and then to be like oh wait this was just a person that didn't want to be a slave to the god of christianity yep the abrahamic god um i do remember that when I realized I wasn't a Christian, I was like 13 or 14, and I remember what wow, I was wearing. Young. I remember what I was wearing. I was wearing my camo <laughs> Top Gun t-shirt. I was standing in my basement bathroom mirror, and oh. I said, I looked in the mirror and said, I'm an atheist. Stop. And I remember that very vividly, and at this time I was homeschooled, and so I'd known it for a while, and I have an atheist coming out story, by the way. That's so I young. I had no while. idea you were so young. <laughs> that is yeah. impressive. YouTube, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what YouTube can do for you. <laughs> I've known for a while that I wasn't religious, but being in that community, going to like conservative co-ops, like at least every week, going to youth group, like, and I still continue to do those things after I realized I wasn't religious. I just felt even more disconnected from what little community I did have. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard. I struggled a lot after that point, like more so than I had before, just because I felt like I had to put on a front. Like I was saying I was a closeted atheist, like it's nowhere near as much of what a lot of queer youth go through, but in that specific setting, being in a homeschooled Christian conservative community, right. it is really hard. and. It's not something that I feel like most people would think would be hard. But your parents are still driving you to your co-op yeah. every day, like you, and to church. And, you know, you don't yeah. have any control, really, when you're that young, certainly. Right. So that is insane. And you were, like, sitting in Bible classes or whatever, probably, mm -hmm. like... That's crazy. Like I was partis I, was, I think at that point I was still participating in, like, productions of... 
things at my church. Joan on the whale. No, like I was Mary for, for our Virgin Christmas Mary. thing. Yes. Were you actually? I was. Shut I have up. a photo of it. It was definitely during when I was starting to realize I wasn't religious. Oh, that's another level. Wow. We were both unbaptized together this year at yeah. Pride. Very chill, very dainty. I feel like so many of these first episodes with my friends are just the like the overview and there's so many little things I'm gonna mention that are fascinating topics to get into later but it's so hard to talk about everything at one time. Mm -hmm. I didn't even tell you this. My family members that are currently in this house found the frame with like the certificate of the unbaptism and it was a whole thing. I'll tell you more about that later. I do still have it though. Oh my gosh. But it's it's wild that I still have it. So yeah. But it opened yeah. up like a conversation of <laughs> I really got to just see even more the fear mentality of anything that's other Mm -hmm. or anything that's considered a cult or has a darkness to it or whatever. I just, I find it interesting. Of course I know there's darkness in the world, obviously, but I just don't consider the things that I'm into to be the worst base level of darkness that there is. I think there are things that are far worse. <laughs> that's so far, funny. Far, far, far that's worse. Not, I mean, it's not funny, yeah, but no, it's it like... Is. It was crazy. I know. Sorry. No, it's okay. I was like, oh shoot. That's what I get for like displaying it in my room. <laughs> It was like right here. Oh. And I was like, oops. <laughs> Oopsie. Yeah. It's almost like I asked for it, but. I posted mine on my Instagram story. We weren't like dating officially, but we were like going on dates. One of our mutual friends showed this guy. He was like, hey, she's unbaptized. She's a Satanist. Like he was Wait, warning what? her about him. Are you so serious? Funny. Yeah. <gasps> they were both religious and it's like a religious bro code, which I understand. It's like if it's important for you that who you're dating is the same religion as you. I get that. I find that interesting too. That I might be able to work around that in a relationship mm -mm. as long as the person wasn't Christian. Like, if the person I was with was literally anything else almost, mm -hmm. like Hindu, Buddhist, even a lot of people who were loosely Catholic, you know what I mean? Or were raised Catholic maybe and they still have some of those traditions ingrained but they're not going to try to force it on mm -hmm. their spouse or their kids or whatever. I, I think is interesting, but it is all it's kind of funny to say the statement that you know I could I could do that with a partner if they were anything other than Christian or Mormon not fucking with that no. ever. Never Mormonism, again. I believe that Mormonism <laughs> is worse than Christianity If anyone I happens agree. upon this who's I agree, Mormon, I'm so sorry, and I wish you all the best, but I don't <laughs> <laughs> um, But it's horrifying read under the banner of heaven read that book because holy cow. It's incredible I do, I'm joking. I do wish you the best but anyway, see Except for one. You don't have to. Except for one, you know who you, <laughs> you are. You know who you are. <laughs> to that matter, I do think it's kind of funny how Christians, specifically in America, are always like, well, how come it's okay for you to make fun of Christianity? Mm -hmm. But the moment you make fun of Islam or Judaism or any of these other religions, it's not okay. And it's like, you can make fun of me, but I can't make fun of you. It's always white people, first of all. Logical fallacy. Specifically... Yeah white conservative men or white women with either a savior or a victim complex. In America, Christianity is the dominant religion. My experience in the Midwest, mm -hmm. those other religions, especially in the Midwest, are a minority. And they tend to also not only be religious minorities, but ethnic minorities mm -hmm. and racial minorities. So it's also true that Christianity, like if you look at the Crusades, it's been used oh. Christianity has been used as a weapon. It is not just a religion. People right. use it as a weapon towards gay people, towards people of minorities, towards people of other religions. If like, you don't know what the Crusades are, just a quick Wikipedia. I remember yeah. reading about that for school and thinking, this is horrifying. <laughs> yeah. This is crazy. But of course the books I read about it were all, follow this humble Christian exactly. family through their journey in the time of the Crusades. And it's like, aww. But it's not aw. It's horrifying. <laughs> The Crusades is the dirty, dark history of Christianity mm -hmm. that people, I mean, not even talking about all the things that go on in the Bible, but after that, I think a lot of people try to bury the Crusades or just kind of skim over it because even mm -hmm. really devout Christians know that those events were very horrible and violent and mm -hmm. icky. Doesn't look good I for you, buddy. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Most people in America, if you're not Christian, it's either because you weren't raised that way or mm -hmm. you left. And it's mm -hmm. because you were hurt by it. Christianity has been used by a Isn't weapon that against me, against a lot of my friends, a lot of people that I know. And I feel like it's used as a weapon in 
my community more than other religions are and so I think if you are hurt by a religion you are more than welcome regardless of that religion to make fun of it if you were ever of, if you are ever a member of a certain religion it is fully within your right to try to deconstruct that narrative yeah to be like that's hey, humanity this is fucked up and here's why and so that's why specifically in America it is okay to make fun of Christianity because literally on our currency it says in God we trust in schools every but day, we're supposed to have separation pledge. of church and state but in Florida they're wanting to put the Ten Commandments in school classrooms I'm pretty sure it's in Florida I think so where else <laughs> exactly and so it's like how can you have separation of church and state but in these federally funded locally funded um, tax payer funded schools you are making it so it has they have to have scripture mm -hmm. in the classroom are you giving Muslim kids the opportunity to pray right are you like are they free to leave to go pray if you're it's going to be promoting one religion you should be promoting all of them or you mm -hmm. should be promoting none of them and pers personally in that setting you should not be promoting any of them i could go on this rant forever but no, it's just it's like so true christianity has been used as a weapon more than it is not therefore that was our time. <laughs> i can laugh at you going to church it's just so rare to have someone or to know someone who was not raised religious in any way and I do have, I would say, a handful of friends where they're like Christmas and Easter type people, meaning they just went to church on Christmas and Easter and they mm. were raised fairly chill. But then when it comes to big things, they would call themselves Christian. But I feel like, you know, as girls or kids who were raised hardcore Christian, you mm. know, the friends you have that were like, oh yeah, like our family's Christian and I'm immediately able to sniff out like you did not go through <laughs> the mm. things that we went through. <laughs> They're the snowbirds of Christianity. <laughs> if you know what a snowbird is, you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> oh my, we're going to Florida for the winter. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not saying I wish, I wish deep on, you know, like insane trauma upon any of those people. It's just that it's kind of easy to spot the different types of intensities that those people may have grown up with compared to, mm -hmm. you know, myself. And that's okay. I have many friends that have had far worse and more traumatizing experiences than anything that I ever have. So it's a spectrum. I do have a friend who's very religious and I love her dearly. She uses it as a tool to bring herself a fuller to like closer to self-actualization. And I think that is beautiful. And that, that's not at all what I was taught, or no. probably not what you were no, taught either. not at you all. You know what I mean? It's not a path to finding yourself. It's a, you go to hell if you're not of this belief system. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Scary. Scary it for is. a child. It's yeah. Like, we could talk about that all day, is how traumatizing that is for a child. I'm going to hell because I wore makeup. Yeah. I'm not allowed to paint my nails. So scary. I can't go to church with wet hair. The hair, the hair trauma? <laughs> I was trying to say the hell trauma. No, the hair trauma. <laughs> the because hair trauma. But the hell trauma is so think real. about you naked in the shower. That's crazy. <laughs> that's insane. Ella! That's wild. I was wet never told hair. that. But oh, a lot I of, said what? No, a lot of Christian girls wet are hair told that. Sexual. You can't worship yourself because you're essentially in that. Right. Turn My body is a temple, but an I idol. can't You're, you're idol catching that because I wouldn't it have just it turned just off. okay thank god I saw imagine just, your entire no because I was rant. watching it and it just like gosh what was I talking oh how scary how scary the idea of hell is like that's why I had insomnia for most of my middle school early teen years insane insomnia where I would then be up all night watching British YouTubers shout out Joe so Sugg <laughs> Joe Sugg is who I would watch when I had, yes, <laughs> when I had insomnia, fun. when I had hell-induced insomnia attacks, I would put on Joe Sugg. <laughs> You're not going to hear that on any other podcast. Come on now. So that, that was so much a part of it is I was, this is like so vulnerable, but I, I mean, I don't care. It's just a fact. I was petrified I would die in my sleep and go mm -hmm. to hell because I'd not been baptized at that point. So I think that is the subconscious fear that kept me awake and that gave me these insomnia attacks randomly is I just mm -hmm. had this conviction that I was going to die in my sleep and that I would go to hell because I hadn't been saved yet so I didn't want to die in my sleep so I had to stay awake. Isn't that crazy? Gosh. That is <laughs> I said, crazy. Joe Sugg. <laughs> Joe Sugg vlog. To me it probably would have been like My Life is Ava and Alicia Marie. Stop! And, um, my like, Life is Ava was my Lord DIY. Shoot. Me too. Dude. Literally my life. Literally my life. <laughs> Just every single day. <laughs> Messy buns and Christmas oh, lights. Me and my cousins ate that shit up. You know she makes EDM music now. <gasps> I 
I think I she actually stalked EDM. her on Instagram once and I saw her DJing and I was like, and that's the pipeline I like to see. Do you have anything else to add on this topic before I do a for slight transition? Scary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, again, we could talk about this for so long. You're going there. I'll see ya. <laughs> I'll see ya down there, girl. Okay, this is something else too before we move on. I am still, I would say the one thing that still has its claws in me so deep is the idea of a real physical hell. And that's what they want, right? Like they being the establishment, whatever, the organized religion establishment, is they want you <laughs> to be... That's Satan be, coming out of her. <laughs> Beelzebub <laughs> rises. They want you to still be holding on to that. <laughs> to be holding on to that fear. Because that is something that I'm still working through. Is like... And I love asking people this too. What is hell? What do you think hell is? Do you think it's... Because what's kind of brought me peace is the idea that maybe... Even maybe the intention of hell was supposed to be like a metaphysical idea of you keeping yourself in a... Um, like a mental hell your whole life and not being fully actualized or doing what makes you happy. That is hell. Not this real physical place from the paintings where you go to burn and be miserable because again feeding that idea to a what four five six year old and then the older you get and the more you start to mull over that and think about that where it's like oh if i don't do the right thing by these standards i will be tortured my whole life that is a petrifying thought mm -hmm. like the concept of eternity of eternal yep. suffering being put on a child our little brains can't think about that <laughs> Because you stole a piece of candy out of your out of your pasture <laughs> out of your like youth group candy dish. You it wasn't candy time yet. You took a piece of candy. You're going to fucking hell. Eternal suffering for that Jolly Rancher. <laughs> One Jolly Rancher for eternal suffering, please. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so is that a concept that really freaked you out, or do you have a something related to how you were raised that you still are like that makes me uncomfortable because I still don't know what to think about that. Hell is still just something that's obviously really scary to me that I'm constantly working through. Hell is really scary, and I think I used to be like, well, what if I'm wrong? Exactly. But that's the, thing the thing is, well, what if I'm right? Exactly. Because that's true of any religion. Any, yeah. Everyone can be wrong. Or no one. What if I'm right, and I spend my entire life living how I want to be, and then I just die and go into oblivion? Mm -hmm. and I or think, into a tree. I want to go into a tree. I think my thing is, if I'm wrong, and there is a god... First of all, I would never worship a god who would torture someone for eternity because mm -hmm. they didn't worship him. I don't think that is a god worth worshiping. If Real. my disbelief in you is enough for me... You to cast me away forever. If I really am your child, it doesn't matter. It's one mm -hmm. of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, if I really am one of your lost sheep, <laughs> why would you cast me out? Right. Yes, I totally if agree I am with that. a lost child that there is an Amber Alert for and you are my parents, are you ever going to truly give up searching for me until there is a body? <laughs> <laughs> and the inverse of that, too, is what I was told in my worldview class that wasn't actually a worldview. I was telling Ella mm -hmm. it was a, it was at a Christian co-op, so it was... Yep. We learned about other religions, but it was through the lens of, these are all wrong. Let's learn about it through the lens of the right one, which is Christianity, right? But the inverse of that same idea, this is why you could go in loops with this forever and ever and ever, because that's what I was told about Christianity is, well, if you're, if you're right, then, then good, you're right. But if you're wrong, eternal damnation. Right. <laughs> so it can be flipped either way, but I completely agree with that. And I've had so many conversations like that. If you're, if this is only a fear tactic, then it's not... I, I don't want to believe in a God who only opens his loving arms for people that do exactly what he says, for lack of a better way to describe that or to paraphrase. Exactly. Yeah. It's a weirdly comforting thought. <laughs> to exactly. Think, well, if I can just be thrown out that easily, then why would I torture myself for the rest of my life? That's what I want to scream at certain people. Exactly. And you know who you are too. <laughs> why do you want to be miserable for the rest of your life? when you could just, hey, maybe not be. <laughs> I understand that it's not that easy and there's family yeah. factors and whatnot, but... Cultural. Yeah, it's easy to get on a high horse too and to be like, I freed myself and I deconstructed, so why can't you? I know it's not that easy for people and it is a constant mental battle, but 
still. You get this righteous anger because you don't want your friends who are still stuck in that situation to be miserable because mm -hmm. you know what it feels like, so. I don't have to prove that I'm a good person to anyone. I frankly have nothing to prove and I don't care. <laughs> Whatever you believe about me, double it, make it 10 times worse, and believe that shit. <laughs> it's exhausting to try to show that you are worthy of love to some people mm. like that. Like, especially if you do have a queer identity, it's like I'm done trying to prove myself to people who will willingly have ill faith. Right, willingly is yeah, and a key word there. too. Mm. If instead of deconstructing something, you double down, you're the, you're the fucking problem. Too far gone. Get out. Like, I hate to Get say out. It, but too far gone. <laughs> exactly. Honestly. And so for those people, why am I going to try when clearly you are so stuck in your ways that you are the only one who can change things? If I, by being myself, can't prove you wrong, then I'm not going to try to because I have, frankly, much better things to do. Right. And that that's the heartbreak of those kinds of situations is finally being so broken down and so exhausted that the only thing you can do is finally pull away. It is, it's yep. heartbreaking. It's a heartbreaking part of adulthood and young adulthood if you're if you're in those circles and find yourself in that situation. Now to bring some levity, what do you know about this girl? <laughs> Felicity Merriman, 1774, I believe. Oh, no, because it was all fours. All the American Girl Dolls, yeah. I think, are fours, like 1884 and 1974. 1974, she is a patriot. <laughs> Thank you, I shall have no tea. Oh my gosh, why is saying a patriot. a patriot remind me of it's giving, um, like, ben... Rush Limbaugh? It's no, giving Rush Limbaugh. Say, and it's giving like Ben Shapiro. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Adrian. Adrian. But anyways, this Ooh. girl, love of my life, I remember I begged and begged and begged for Felicity doll. And literally the Jeez. year they stopped making her doll for Christmas, I got a Felicity doll. Ooh. I still have her to she this She in under the line. Day. She does. To this day. We had a play I will never get rid of her. She is, oh, I love Felicity so much. And part of it is because I am a horse girl. Yeah. And okay, that movie, We I think we maybe have talked about yes, the movie. With Shailene Woodley. I swear by that movie. Oh my word. Ben! Oh, ben is so fine. He Ooh, is. He runs away to join the militia. I was hoping he would be the first American boy doll. Oh, can you imagine his little, like, he his little like fuck Chris ass doll. Yes, he would have like Chris with the little flip, like the little brown, like, flippy hair. My Josefina and her Felicity, we had a little picnic with them this summer. It was truly a delight. Insert photo. And a pleasure. Yes, I will. It was it was so lovely. I used to have mm. almost all of the Magic Tree House books. Mm. I only had three or so. Um, I had almost all of them. I had like 30 Magic Tree House books. Iconic. What's yes. her name? Susan Osborne? Susan Marie Osborne or it's, yeah, something? It's, it's, Sorry, I almost said Susan Col Suzanne Collins. <laughs> Suzanne Collins who wrote Magic Tree House? No, it's Magic Hunger the, Games House? Hunger Games. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the Magic Hunger Games House. Catching Fire House? Yeah. House Boots? Literally. <laughs> what's the house? That, literally me when I believe in house. <laughs> me, me when I believe in, when I don't believe in hell. A catching Fire House. <laughs> Catching fire. Even I don't believe in house. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can go as in depth as you want, but I love going in depth. You know, I love I, it deep. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> what are the books and I guess just the media that shaped you as a young girl, young woman? We were talking Anne about Green Anne of Green Gables. Anne of Green Gables. Yes. Anne of Green Gables. I think that's what you would say first, because me too. Little Women and Anne of Green Gables are just right there. We all know this. I listen to the audiobook, and the thing is, I will re-listen to it, but it has to be read by the same person. Mm -hmm. So much, I had the entire, like, first couple of chapters memorized, and it's wow. to the point when, when Anne with an E, which granted, it's not the actress's fault, they will never live up to the movie that was released. Yes. I can't even with remember. With Megan Follows. Yes. Her. The Canadian, oh I think it was a TV so miniseries that they kind of put into a movie, or it was like a, yeah, it was like a TV movie. Mm -hmm. Dude, the, nothing compares the to that. The Gilbert, obviously Anne, she's so mm -hmm. beautiful. It's so perfect and it it's is. so wonderful. It's kind of rare, it's a little hard to find. I have it on VHS, but I don't think it's something that is readily available. Another thing so that so shaped so me, probably the Percy Jackson series, oh. going back to it, I remember reading it when I was so young that I was still religious and I was like, oh my god, why am I reading this stuff? I'm gonna go to hell. I prayed because I read too much Greek mythology and I was like, god, I'm sorry, I swear I don't believe it. I'm reading about Poseidon and betraying you. I'm dreaming about Poseidon. <laughs> really betraying him. <laughs> Forgive me, father, for I have sinned. 
The books why there really is so much but same with Anne of Green Gables and Little Women those were the earliest mm -hmm. earliest ones that I remember. Any specific shows or movies or even things you watched as a family that really stuck out with you? We were a period drama family so like Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, all of that. We watched all the British dramas. Cranford, like everything. I do remember um, <laughs> watching Signing Time with Alex and Leah and learning a little bit. No, no way! Else. No one <laughs> really? Yes! yes! You know what? Yes! It's Signing Time with yeah. Alex and Leah. Come and play. Stop. Or whatever. <laughs> Me and my sister, my mom got them for my sister. <laughs> and I was like roped into watching them. I've never known anyone else that knows what that is. Signing time? Yes. Yeah. Tim Hawkins and Charlie also kind of shaped me. Um, oh. Liberty Kids. Oh! You watched Liberty Kids? Okay. I only did at like church gatherings way in my past where I was like forced to. How about Veggie Tales? Let's just, yes. If we're really Larry going Boy. There. Do you remember the episode of Larry <gasps> Boy or the movie of Larry Boy where they literally have corn impersonation and they're called Husk and they're singing songs and they're like, Larry Boy. No! Like, we did it, Larry Boy, we saved the city! And they're singing it like corn because <gasps> they're literally corn on the cob no! and they're called a husk. I would say the stuff that's really like homeschool girl is the period dramas and Anne of Green Gables yes. and Little Women, of course. And yeah. signing time with Alex and Leah. Yes, apparently. Do you have any crazy homeschool co op stories? Um, me being a major manipulator, speaking of sign language, I was in my sign language class. I didn't study. Oh, I, wish I was cheating during a test because my teacher would sign things. And then we were supposed to write down the word. And so I was just... <laughs> and she was like, I see some peeking eyes. You guys need to stop. I was like, no way. She's talking about me. Let me just keep... <laughs> and so she took me and another girl to this other room. And she was like, Paddle I know you guys were kidding. cheating. Like, And I, first of all, started crying. And I was like, thank you for being so understanding about this. Can I pray for you? I was an atheist at this point. You said that? Yeah, I was like, can I pray you for you? You asked the teacher you, you so were much. cheating for if you could pray for her. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, thank you for like being so understanding. Like, I know it's just been really Stop. hard. It's just been really hard lately. It's like, uh, thank you for, and she was like, I'm just going to let you repeat the test. I was like, thank you for not giving me a zero. Like, oh, can I pray for you? Like, you deserve so much better. I promise Stop. I won't do this again. Stop. I was crying. So, and the thing is, they were forced tears. I was a theater kid, true and through. Oh! through. Miss ma'am, if you're watching this, which you never would because look at how I'm dressed. <laughs> um, you got... She'll see the thumbnail and say, oh no, mm -hmm. I rebuke. So you called yourself an atheist then, but you don't necessarily anymore, I guess? Like that was just what you jumped yeah. to first because you were like, oh, this is someone who doesn't believe in this, so I'm going to ascribe that to myself. Yeah. So. It's interesting because yes, I would say that I am an atheist now, but I also wouldn't say that I am a atheist. It's hard. I, I'm agnostic for sure, but I like the term atheist better because mm -hmm. I feel like most people don't know what agnosticism is. Right. And also, I don't mind being an atheist. I feel like it's a very taboo word, like the word lesbian. It's like, it shouldn't be. I don't, the thing is, I wish I was spiritual because I think it's so beautiful to have mm -hmm. rituals and to believe in things. And I like... I like Catholicism simply for the fact that they Girl, have, I love the Gothic Catholicism. Hot. It is. And I like the idea of like a midnight mass, not praying, oh, but I like the idea of so like good. rituals yes. and I wonder if like this is the crystals. Same. I wish I believed in yeah. crystals, but I don't. And they have incense. I wonder if this is normal for people who were raised Christian and like that very bland, like scary Ethel Cain type vibe to really romanticize Catholicism because I know people who were raised Catholic, that's a whole other level of trauma and having to go in a confessional box and all this crazy, like for us, it's easy to be like hot, but for the right, people no. who were raised in it, that would be so traumatic. I can't even imagine. So I wonder if it's normal and like, it's not just me that since I wasn't raised in that, I can look at this like gorgeous, ornate, ritualistic religion and think, that is so sickening because I romanticize that so hard. All my friends know I'm obsessed with nuns. I'm obsessed with the incense and the mm -hmm. churches and it's all so beautiful. But I know people who were raised in that are just used to it. So I don't know. But I, yeah, I romanticize it so hard. Yeah. How can you not? It's so gorgeous. I know Catholicism is like horrifying in its own ways, but it's just so much prettier. It's so much prettier it than being raised like Baptist or God forbid Presbyterian or anything oh. like that. It's so much more beautiful. Lutheran. Yeah, because the intention. Ah, Lutheran. The intention First is of all, Lutheran different. churches are fugly. Girl. Ours was kind of that same, very bland, very plain, like the old pews and just like white walls. So, yeah. 
So how can you not go and walk into a Catholic church and just be taken in by the effervescent beauty? Half of the churches I went to didn't even have pews. They were folding chairs. Just chairs? Yeah! Oh my word. Yeah. Because I do kind of like the idea that in the house of God, you don't need to ornate things to worship, but also mm -hmm. um, be more cunty. I feel closer to God when it's that beautiful, okay? I have to pee so bad. We have so much more I'll have to go into. We'll have to have a part two. Do you have any parting words? Be true to yourself, kid. Don't listen to those haters. They're all ugly. Um, or they're losers, or they're broke. Or they're ugly losers. And there's nothing wrong with those things unless you're also a hater. Sweet dreams. Thank you for joining us. Get home safe. <laughs> I wish this was a live show. Disney Channel is what these give. Hi everyone.